Good afternoon, Senators, Honorable Chairman Morante. My name is Danielle Savington, that's D-A-N-I-E-L-L-E-S-A-V-I-N-G-T-O-N. -E -E I'm here today uh, as a board member of Nebraskans for Peace and a member of Nebraskans Against Gun Nebraskans Against Gun Violence. I am not here as a member of the NRA, but I am here as a resident of Papillion, Nebraska, and a, and a defense attorney, like Senator Wayne, um, from Lincoln, Nebraska. LB 68 is a direct betrayal of Nebraska residents who rely on their local and municipal governments to take into consideration what the specific safety needs of their communities may be. Lincoln Senators, your community has worked diligently to address specific gun violence and public safety issues within the city, and it is irresponsible to undermine those efforts. Municipal Code 9.36.110 in Lincoln makes it unlawful to leave a firearm unattended in a vehicle for 24 hours or longer. Do you know why Lincoln would have such a municipal code? It's for the justification that in January of 2017 alone, over 185 vehicles have been broken into or stolen. If even a fraction of those vehicles were used for the storage of a firearm when they were broken into, the lawfully owned firearm would be conveyed into the hands of a person already demonstrating engagement in criminal behavior. This, Senators, is how illegal firearms hit the streets and the black market. Contrast the 185 vehicles in one month alone lost or broken into in Lincoln with the five broken into Deschler, Nebraska during the entirety of 2015. In Deschler, Nebraska, there's no need to remove your, vehicle, your guns from your vehicle overnight. In Lincoln, Nebraska, clearly there is. Moreover, when the City Council of Lincoln met to review the proposed expansion of gun regulations for misdemeanors with demonstrated criminality, the council members voted unanimously, 7 to 0, not only to adopt the expansion, but to add the DWI DUI inclusion. These were lawfully elected representatives of their communities basing municipal code on thoughtful research and knowledge of their locality. Last week, this committee heard testimony from members of the law enforcement community regarding LB 624. One officer testified regarding a harrowing incident where an assailant attempted to run him down while he was out shopping with his wife and young child. The assailant, once apprehended, was charged and adjudicated of a misdemeanor class one stalking offense. The officer, fearing for the safety of himself and his family, chose not to obtain a temporary protection order against the unincarcerated assailant because to do so would require providing the assailant with his home address, an address that was in close proximity to the officer's own. However, once again, the city of Lincoln recognized that as a college town, they probably needed some protection and provisions to protect young college students against escalating violence from stalkers, has enacted 9.36.100, which prohibits stalkers from possessing firearms inside the city. The officer whose assailant pled to a stalking misdemeanor now has the added safety to know that should the man approach the officer in the future, the man is barred from possessing a gun to harm the officer's family with, and should he be in possession of one, he's guilty of a defenseless <coughs> statutory offense. Lastly, 9.36.130 makes it unlawful to bring a firearm into, the city, into city or county facilities. Without that protection to prevent the coercion or intimidation of county officials in offices such as the assessor's office when property values are, are in dispute, Local law enforcement will no longer be able to respond to those situations as anything other than a simple trespass, which requires management in the office to order the gun-wielding citizen to leave the facility and the, and the police to be notified. Do we actually pay our city and county employees enough to accost irritated gun owners in the course of their job duties? Thank you for the opportunity to come today and use my voice as a member of Nebraska's second house. I appreciate your consideration as to why it is vital, especially for Lincoln and Omaha area senators, to uphold the safety and well-being of their constituents and to not betray us by supporting LB 68. This bill does not end a patchwork of laws, but instead strips local cities of their capacity to ensure the safety of their community. It is not overly burdensome to expect travelers from elsewhere in the state to take the time to learn that you can't be a convicted stalker and carry a gun in the city of Lincoln. And you need to travel, when you travel into a city where tremendous amounts of vehicle thefts take place, you can't leave your gun unattended in your car to become a commodity of illegal gun trade. Thank you, Senators. Okay, thank you for your testimony. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for coming down today. Much appreciated.